Joining me now for more on this is infectious disease expert, Dr. Alex Wong and Regina, thanks for being here. Hi Sam, always a pleasure. First, how much attention should people be giving to this new variant? Obviously a lot of news in the last few days about it. Uh, we're learning a lot really, really quickly. Really need to credit, you know, uh, various scientists in South Africa, Botswana and around the world for sharing this information, being transparent about it. You know, I think there's a lot of things we don't know yet about Omicron. And so, you know, it's not a doomsday scenario. We know all of the basic things that we've done right from the beginning of the pandemic, from distancing to masking, uh, to getting tested and isolating when symptomatic, all of these things are gonna work. We believe that our vaccines are still going to have good efficacy. We just don't know how much, but there's still a lot of unknowns like how, uh, you know, is it going to be transmissible, more transmissible, more contagious compared to Delta? Is it going to cause more severe illness compared to Delta? Those are things that we're still learning right now. So I think we need to be cautious. We need to look at uh, ways to sort of, you know, minimize the amount of Omicron coming in. But at the same time, you know, we can't be punitive. We need to be open uh, and we need to support uh, vaccine equity around the world because that's why we have this variant is because so many parts of Africa, uh, you know, don't have access to first doses of vaccine as of yet. Most Saskatchewan residents aren't eligible yet for a booster shot. What do you want to see on that front? Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, most people would suggest at this point in time, you know, with uh, increasing amounts of waning immunity, people moving out to sort of five, six months, uh, you know, post second dose, you know, we know that the mRNA vaccines do wane effectiveness, uh, you know, sort of in this time frame. So, you know, moving the age eligibility down, uh, you know, to age 60 or perhaps even lower to age 55 or age 50 does definitely, I think, make sense at this point in terms of a targeted approach. It's not as, as though we have a shortage of access to vaccine. We've had to discard and waste a lot of our vaccine, which is really inexcusable. Um, so that is going to help make a difference in terms of reducing the amount of transmission going into the winter months, which is going to help us, you know, at a provincial level, uh, you know, in terms of avoiding a big fifth wave. We're less than a week into kids under 12 getting vaccinated in our province. Now, many parents have that second dose on their minds. The government of Saskatchewan is allowing parents to do that after three weeks, even though NACI recommends eight weeks. We've got Christmas holidays on the horizon. We've got a new variant to consider. What do you advise? I think right now that the guidance still, you know, from Dr. Diener and, you know, from other uh, individuals, I think including myself, is, is that eight weeks makes the most sense. Uh, we know that when you extend the dosing interval, that that leads to a longer lasting, more robust immune response uh, in everyone, uh, including kids. And we really need to think about COVID as a really long term thing at this point in time. So that's going to be the long term thing that makes the most sense. There is also data that shows in adults that extending the dose out uh, to eight weeks, 12 weeks or even longer reduces your risk of heart inflammation events and so forth. One dose after two, three weeks is probably going to provide pretty good protection, especially given the fact that the risk is relatively low in kids. So again, uh, it's going to be an individual parent's choice. Speak with your healthcare provider, find me on social, uh, and we can talk more about, you know, your individual circumstances. You took your five-year-old for his first shot over the weekend. What was that experience like for you and for your family? It was it was awesome. We uh, went to the super site uh, at the old Costco here in Regina. Uh, all the folks from the SHA were were tremendous. It was a great experience. You know, the nurse that we had uh, was actually someone that we've known for a decade. I'm going to write a bit of a story about that at some point on social and just share that. It was just a really happy moment for us. And, you know, our, ki our son was a champ and he did it himself. Didn't even cry. Unlike daddy, I cried like a baby. I was just so happy. So if you haven't done it yet, please uh, really encourage all parents and caregivers, go get your kid vaccinated uh, ages five to 11. And if you can consider going to the super site, lots of kid friendly stuff. They made it a great experience. So nothing but positive things to say about uh, the weekend. So happy. As someone on the front line, what does it mean to have your little guy protected? It's just, it's hard to really put into words just how, you know, uh, fast all of this has gone and how extraordinary science is and how grateful we are, you know, for how quickly this has come. And, you know, we have to say again that we, we are fortunate to live in a place where we have early access to vaccine the way that we do. Um, so we're incredibly thankful and grateful. And at the same time, we recognize that there's much more to do at a global level and that we need to support that as well, Sam. Thanks so much for your time, Dr. Wong. Always a pleasure, Sam. Thank you. Dr. Alex Wong is an infectious disease doctor in Regina.